one of the biggest fears that I see in a lot of our students and even audience members is the fear of haters judgment and getting canceled. And the thing is, is that it robs you from so, so much of your personal power. And if you want to have a powerful message, you need to be a powerful person. And the fear of haters judgment, the fear of worry, what other people are going to think steals so many great messages. And today we have an amazing episode lined up with you with one of our students who went through a pretty big ordeal online where she was getting called out for something that she didn't even do. And it hit the range of millions and millions of millions of people basically calling her out. And we want to share that story with you today, share exactly what happened, how she overcame it and the lessons she learned from that because it left her in a better spot than when she went into it. And I can't wait for you guys to hear the story. So let's get into it. Hi, I'm Brandon Lucero, and you're about to experience the new way to thrive in business, entrepreneurship, and life by leaning into who you are, what you love, and standing up for what you want to create. Get ready, because this is where we go against the grain, say no to outdated society norms, and we say yes to change in order to create a happier, more fulfilled world. Welcome to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Today we have an amazing episode lined up for you. We have a guest interview today. And this interview is going to be a little bit different than the ones that we've had in the past. And so in the past, we've always talked about a lot of how people have grown their business and strategies that they use and things like that. But we had a student recently who um, reached out because they were having some issues with haters online. And it was probably one of the worst cases of hater aid that I have seen in a student. And so, um, to the point where like millions of people were taking notice of what was going on. And I wanted to have uh, today's guest on to talk about that experience, what she learned and all of that stuff. So today we have uh, Jennifer Hale on the podcast. Je- Jennifer, welcome. Glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm excited for you to be here as well. And Uh, For those of you who haven't noticed, um, I have the hiccups right now, so I'm doing my best (laughs) to navigate this podcast episode, but I've had them for like the last 36 hours, and so I get them every once in a while, and it'll last for a couple days, so just if I pause or hiccup, just don't mind that, but anyways, um, Jennifer, I can't wait to dive into the story um, of, of what you experienced and how you dealt with it, but just to give people a little context of what it is that you do, do you mind giving kind of your background and tell a little bit about your story and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, no, not at all. I am a voice actor. I'm an actress and most of my work is in the voice acting and voiceover field. I've been doing this for uh, 40 years, just over, it'll be 41 years this spring. And um, I started in Birmingham, Alabama, expanded into Atlanta, Georgia, where I could go back and forth to Birmingham and then moved to LA in the 90s um, for on-camera stuff ended up after a couple years of, you know, working a couple times a year, which is not enough to support yourself, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. making a voice over tape just to make some money. The, my instincts said that even though I was broke. I was like, okay, we listen when the void speaks. And uh, I spent money I didn't have, made a reel. And because I came in with, you know, eight years of really hard working experience behind me, I seemed like an overnight sensation. A uh, little clue there for anyone who compares yeah, themselves to overnight that seems to always, Don't always be. Don't that's always that. the case. Yes, and so um, I, my, ironically, my first audition was for a cartoon, and I was not allowed to watch cartoons as a kid. But I just kind of went on my instincts and booked a series. Back when we used to book, there was sixty-four episodes. They'd have sixty-four episode buys and fifty-seven episode buys, and you'd just be working for the next couple what, of years. What cartoon that. was it? It was Where on Earth Is Carmen San Diego? Oh the yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So who who are you? Who are you voicing? Ivy. I was Ivy. You know, oh, Zach, okay. watch out! You know yeah. the whole deal. Love it. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun, and I thought this was the way cartoons were because we had it was uh, one of the first shows on regular TV that met all the educational TV requirements, which had content requirements. It also had cast requirements, so our cast was half women, half men, and we had a beautifully ethnically mixed cast every week. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, cartoons are amazing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then I booked my next cartoon, which was Skeleton Warriors, full of violence with two female cast members, both of whom were drawn, you know, with uh, large equipment, shall we say. And um, lots of violence and maybe two lines per episode as the token yeah. females. It was uh, it was very different. But things, it's been really incredible to watch the evolution of pop culture 
over the time that I've been in, you know, I make jokes about being an old timer, but <laughs> to have seen what's happened and what's happening still is incredible. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've done that for 40 years. I have a, um, uh, uh, a Guinness record. I am the most prolific female voice actor in games. I've done more than wow. any other female on the planet. Yeah. The New Yorker profiled me a few years ago and they said really nice things. I don't know. What, is, that. what does that mean? Most really prolific. Cool. Like how do they? I've done more. I've I've done more video games than any other female on the planet. Oh, I love that. Okay, that they cool. could find. You know, yeah. <laughs> maybe there's some. I don't know. Uh, I'll enjoy it while I have it, and it's been a few years that I've had it. But also, yeah. I have that because in uh, the way we work, the sessions are four hours in animation or games under the union contract, and in animation, it's like a radio play. Everybody has a turn, and in games, it's a one-person show. It's a four-hour one person show perform mm. perform perform and you don't get to see it ahead of time most of the time so it's cold read cold read couple takes it goes to market let's hope okay. it's good <laughs> yeah. so it's a and a lot yeah a lot of people didn't want to do it in the beginning so i was like i'll do it i want to buy it because i love real estate that's my joke right. i have a guinness record because i love real estate so yeah i did that and then uh, about a year and a half ago i started a support services site to the industry called skills skills hub acting.skillshub.life, and that's how you and I cross paths. Yeah. We um, recognized that marketing was really important, and um, I worked with Jim Fortin for a couple years. Um, very lucky to have landed in Jim's circle and then, therefore, in your circle. And right. So we, um, as Skills Hub, we've joined uh, the mentorship group with you, which is, honest to God, it has changed so much for us on, you know, I'm acknowledging you right now because really yeah. it's changed so much for us on so many levels. We were... We were f flailing and didn't know it because we were like, we're so great. We have such credibility. Why is no right. one listening? <laughs> right. I joined yeah. your program. I'm like, oh, because no one has the time, the bandwidth or the or cares. Right. We need to talk yeah. about them. And that is we just had our second annual meeting, which is the first one since we joined your program last late last spring. And our everything about it was so different. It was just the angles and the lenses we looked through were so powerfully different. I love that. Yeah. Well, I, I love to, cause it's such a different style of business than what we're used to working with. And so mm -hmm. for everyone that doesn't know it, it, basically what Jennifer does with, with the, the, the brand skills, skills hub, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is and teaching it's other dot life. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. life yeah. teaching other yeah. voice actors, how to like put together stuff to get jobs and how they can get more acting jobs and, and things like mm -hmm. that. It's a member membership site. Um, but what I love about it is, is it was so different different. I mean, the price point is affordable. You guys are going after mass volume. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I, I just, I, I loved it. Side note, I meant to bring this up earlier. I actually grew up, um, in a place called Santa Rosa Valley out in Camarillo, California. And there was a, a voice actor who lived out there, Jim, Jim Cummings. Jim Cummings. You, you know him? <laughs> I know Jim. I've known Jim oh, okay. most of my career out here in, well, out in LA. Yeah. Yes, I love Jim. So I remember yes. going over there as a kid and we like ring the doorbell and like, can you do Darkwing Duck? Because he did Darkwing <laughs> Duck voice. <laughs> yes. And he would be like, ah, he would do Darkwing Duck's voice. And then, because he actually <laughs> lived next door to my friends, my, my friend knew oh him. Oh my really God, well. I'm going to tell him. I may see him this weekend. That's so yeah. funny. And so, oh. um, uh, he, uh, uh, then he would do like Tasmanian devil yeah. and things like that. So I remember being a kid and we would go over there cause my, <laughs> again, my buddy lived like next door to him. Um, yeah. but it was, yeah. it was really, it was really funny when you did the, the IV voice, it reminded me of Jim yeah. because I could, I could see you. And then it was a completely different voice. <laughs> That's right. It was. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's so weird when you're not I'm used to it. But I remember, now, Brandon. Yeah. I, I remember like going over to Jim's, Jim's house and he would, he would do that. It was, it was really yeah. funny. Yeah. Um, and just as another side note too, because this, this will help tell, tell the story where we're, where, you know, where we're going. Um, I had, like, I'm not in, obviously in the voice acting world, so I had no idea how big your reach was, but one of mm -hmm. our um, employees, Brittany, her boyfriend was like, wait, Jennifer Hale, she's a cl client of yours, and he knew you from video games, and he yeah. was like, oh my God, she's like a celebrity in our space, <laughs> and da, 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 all, this, all this stuff, and I was like, oh, I, I didn't realize she had such big reach, and big reach is, is great, but it also also can come with some, um, consequences. It's kind of like what Don, cause you work with Don Javier as well. Yeah. The Don always tells us as you know, the line gets thinner and thinner. And, and what I mean, what I, what I, the way I interpret that is like, 
as you grow or you become more well known, the line becomes thinner. Like you, when you make a mistake, the consequences are way more severe yeah. um, or the reactions are way more severe. And I think that's kind of what you ran into. And so yeah. well, it, what, it's, what happened? Yeah. Well, I'll actually just pause for a second and say something's coming up this weekend that is part of the story that it's very, you know, spotlighty and limelighty. And I found myself like feeling really weird and off. And, and it, it has taught me that as your reach grows, your personal power must keep up with it mm. or your ego will take over and drag you into a whole bunch of insecurity and dark stuff and, and giving your power away. You know, do you, it's do you have just, a specific example? Yeah, I'm getting an award this weekend, and it's a big one. And I have found myself really anxious and really tense the last couple of days. And I was like, what is happening? What is this? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's uh, thankfully I've evolved past. You shouldn't be like that to, okay, body's telling me something. What is it? And it's like, oh, right. I'm feeling a lot of pressure. And I went, oh, wow, I must be taking a leap up in my growth and in my expansion of me in the world as a being because all my same noise comes up. Every time I level up, I get the same noise coming at me which is the undeserving, the unworthy, the, oh my God, the, uh, what if I make, I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to fall short. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow, all that is about things outside me. And none of it has to do with my real life and my own soul and my own heart. And my attention just got sucked back into where it goes to when these things come up. And so with a larger things and larger opportunities and larger, you know, cool stuff, I have to larger my internal power, larger mm -hmm. my mastery of my attention because it'll yeah. suck you down the hole you get sucked down the hole a lot faster when things yeah. are bigger and magnified it's just a woof it's like a whoosh and you're like where am i and yeah. when you say like suck down the hole are you are you talking about <clears throat> like um ego arrogance yes. uh importance Fear. or or ego or, monkey mind okay. ego monkey mind ego because for me ego fear and insecurity is also ego you know, because mm, right. the other arrogance is the opposite side of the insecurity coin, yeah. you know, and the self-importance coin. And this is self-importance only in the placed in the negative frame. Right. Yeah. Um, rather than I am honestly inconsequential. What matters is the energies that are moving here. Yeah. You know, the the concepts that are shared, the things that could lift someone. Not that that's my my place, right. but it is my place to mind my frequency so that I can. I can be a plus in the universe and not a, a, an energy sucking vortex. Well, yeah. I think that that also plays into the whole, like the line gets thinner, you know, cause yes. it's, it's exactly. like if you are, you have arrogance and ego and you're not really doing much, it's like, you're not really going to see much of a consequence to that because you don't really, there's not really like, you're not at the, the top of the the game, right? So it's like, yeah. <clears throat> if you have a million dollars and get into arrogance, like a million dollars goes away, it's a pretty big thing. But if you only have $10 and you get into arrogance and the $10 goes away, it's like big deal. You just lost 10 bucks, not a big of a deal. So, exactly. so when you, you have to mean, maintain, um, a lot of, a lot of that. And I, I got into that too. Like when mm. we first started like the video for X, we saw success so fast and I got into arrogance and I got into mm. ego. And then mm -hmm. as quickly as it came, it went right back down the other way. And the Don talks to us about that all the time. He's like, if you guys aren't yeah. humble, like this will all be taken away from you. Yeah. And so he, he talks, yeah. you know, he talks a lot about that, but let's, let's talk about the personal power side of it. So gaining, you said gaining more personal power has allowed you to overcome that or, or when you play higher levels, you need to mean bring that personal power with you. Yeah. How has that I've... looked for you and what does that mean to you? It means that, honestly, it's not about, for me, I haven't seen it play out as, as constantly being in the zone. Mm. It's really about what do my course corrections look like? Because I didn't come in as a god or, or as someone like the Don. I came in as human mm. and through a path that, that had tons of trauma, right? So tons of lessons and tons of also that leads me with potential triggers and triggers are teachers, right? Triggers mm -hmm. are openings to healing. So maintaining personal power looks like when I hear an arrogance was never an issue for me. Doubt mm. was how, how um, my ego expressed. It didn't Got express it. through arrogance. It expressed through self-doubt and expressed through um, suffering, right? Mm. And when I feel myself moving into suffering, self-doubt, feeling pressured, feeling unhappy and miserable, I'm like, okay, ego is up. So personal power and the larger the games get that I play, the bigger the hits feel. 
Right. And yep. and the more intense they feel, but that's I don't know if that's true. Actually, they've always felt intense and big. Um, but maintaining personal power for me means returning very quickly to silence and to what I call zero, which is that neutral place of no thinking, mm. where I just surrender. You know, and and this story that we're going to talk about had so many opportunities. You talk about amplifying and lessons. And for me, what it looks like, these moments and times of lessons, I don't feel powerful in them. Right. I feel powerful after them. You know, mm. I always joke, it's like horse poo in people's, or cow poo in people's yards. It's like the cow manure. When you drive down the street and it stinks because somebody has decided to put a bunch of cow fertilizer in the yard because they right. want nice grass. For a while, it just stinks. And then there's little bits of green popping up And then after a couple months, you're like, that's gorgeous. That, for me, is the experience of growth and growing personal power, growing my awareness. Like, it's the stinky part is what grows the grass. And this this event was a a big stinky part with tons of lessons on so many levels. Well, I want to dive into it, but there's a couple things I want to to add. Um, The first one is is what it sounds like, and it sounds like the very similar – um, explanation of what I talk about when personal power and, and one of the easiest ways to recognize that you're losing personal power is when the ex- external world has control over your internal and the more personal power you have, the less the external influences your, your internal. And I don't think a lot of people get that. Yeah. You can go through really bad situations or not, not even bad because bad, even bad isn't an interpretation, but just uncomfortable or unwanted (laughs) circumstances or whatever, and doesn't need to affect your internal being. And when it does, that's the external world controlling your internal, which is a loss of personal power. And like watching the dawn and, and, and well, yeah, I guess just watching the dawn, you can see, I mean, I've, I've seen him in pain, like, like Mm -hmm. the energy is so intense that He's just, you can just tell that he's in pain, but he's the happiest go, go lucky guy because even that of what's going, the energy around is, is an external thing and his internal is always like at, at, the, at the highest because he just has intense amounts of, of personal power. Yeah. And going back to the example with the manure, I love, I love that, that an analogy. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's this, that's what I always tell people is like, you, when you're going through something, you want to be very careful of what you share and how much you share it. And even in setting up this interview, like when you were going through it, I was like, Hey, we need to do a podcast episode on this. And you're like, okay, I can do it next week. And I was like, no, 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 let's like, let's let it like sit for a while because that's yeah. when the lessons are learned and integrated and processed. And then yeah. that's when you become that teacher. And, and so, um, it's really exciting to see you go through it, not during it, but now, yeah. now you're on the other side because I know you have so many powerful lessons that you're now going to be able to share with your students and your things. And that's part of what being um, a a thought leader or space leader is, is like being the first one to go through something so you can learn those lessons and bring them down. But so many people like want to stop, never, never go through any of that. And it's like, well, Mm -hmm. great. Then you're going to have no lessons to share with anyone. You're gonna have no, Mm -hmm. no business and you got to be a warrior. So let's dive into that story. Um, I'll just kind of let you take it wherever you want. You know, yeah. start wherever you think is best. I actually want to start with addressing something you just said. Sure. You know, when I, I don't live in my story anymore. I used to, mm-hmm. I have a, you know, there's a thing called an ACE score, which is a adverse childhood experiences. It's a marker of how you grew up. And I, they get concerned if you're over a four. I'm a seven. And I am so grateful because the lessons I've been able to learn from that did not feel like that at the time. Mm-hmm. But the lessons I've been able to learn from that their gifts, I, I'm humbled that I have those gifts. I'm so humbled. So um, that actually factors into part of the story. So here's mm-hmm. the story. <laughs> I did a game um, uh, called uh, Bayonetta 3. And another uh, woman had played the role of Bayonetta in the first two. And whenever I take over a role, I always do my due diligence. And I did my due diligence in this case. I asked, the director is a a longtime dear friend who is one of the most brilliant voice directors on the planet, honestly. And I trust what she told me 100%. And the facts have played out what I was made aware of. Because I ask, I poke and I ask, because to me that's mm-hmm. an integrity issue. Yeah. So I did my due diligence. I was very, very satisfied that it was, it was okay. It was can, I, can I interrupt real quick? So I have a, I have a yeah. question. When you mm-hmm. say 
so if I understand the the situation, basically someone was playing the uh, did the voice for a character in version one and two, and then you took mm-hmm. over that character in version three. Is that what, okay? And Got yep, it. in the third third okay. show, you know version of the game. Yeah, the next Got level it. of the game, um, and the level involves spoiler alert. A lot of multiverses, a lot of different versions of this character with a lot of variation in it. So mm. um, that was a that's a piece of this puzzle. So let's just go to the timeline. I'm uh, I was in Costa Rica for a couple of weeks with friends and and my kid and getting ready to come back. And uh, we had we're facing a 29 hour travel day. It's uh, oh, we're going to travel on the Saturday. And I, I was prepared mentally. I was like, all right, we're going to do this, and we'll, I can parent and travel. It's all going to be good. And then four o'clock, no, three fifteen in the morning, I wake up with food poisoning. I'm like. You know, oh for like, and it was fascinating, actually, because of the lessons I've learned, because of the ways I now understand to process my body, just a little side bit, I was able to be with my body and say, okay, you are working for me right now. You are getting things out that don't belong in here. I'm developing antibodies. This is really cool. It's uncomfortable as they make them. Just don't wake up my kid because he yeah. had a bed in the same room, right? So I, I puke for about four hours and, and I'm just trying to get on my feet because I have to check out of the Airbnb. And I'm finally in that stage about six, seven hours later where I can get I can get upright to put my stuff in my bag and get out the door. And a friend of mine texts me, this wonderfully thoughtful friend. She said, I just want to give you a heads up. There's this thing happening online and it's involving you. And And I was like, honey, I'm just trying to stand up without throwing up. And I got 29 hours of travel and I thank you. I so appreciate your care. And she's like, I'm sorry. I'm like, don't worry about it. So um, we do our first, we drive for a couple hours, do our first flight, wait about eight hours. I'm finally trying to get some food down. And then we get on our next flight at 2 in the morning. And about 6 in the morning, we get to Mexico City and we land. And this is a day later, Sunday morning at 6. And I'm like, okay, so what is this? I look at my yeah. phone and I was like, holy crap, what? <laughs> um, the woman who did the first two games mm. had made a video. And it was it, it was shot in a very interesting way. <laughs> sort of a little bit of a hostage video vibe to, you know, the, the visuals. It was like, this is very compelling. It, it's engaging. And in the video, she uh, took a real topic, which is that voice actors are under-recognized and underpaid and sometimes, you know, not infrequently abused in this corner, Mm -hmm. and said that that was her story and that they had offered her $4,000 to do the entire game. And I was like, oof, that's a bad deal. I'm not allowed to talk about what I was paid, but it was not that. And, um, And that it was awful. And she had split it into a few videos. And if you watch those videos, the totality, which is about nine minutes all the way to the end, you would get a sense there were some issues happening over there. Mm -hmm. You would get a sense like something's up, but people don't do that. So what's happening for me is I'm looking online (laughs) and my goodness, a little bit of context. Since I very first started my career, you know, way back in the late 80s, you know, in Birmingham, Alabama, I know oh God love it was the no it was the early 80s good lord um yeah wow <laughs> um I would tell anyone who wanted to know how to do this I don't believe in competition I'm always like yeah you do this and you talk to this person I'll give you their number and I'll put in a word for you and yeah yeah right. let's do it here you want to be with an agent come be with my agent I love my agent you know and right. Place of service. that's how I operate so what I was being called online was the b word the mm-hmm. c word which was new for me, and uh, a backstabber. For, for a, what, though? Because you took over the game? Because I did the job. Because in the video, uh, the woman who did the previous two games uh, named me that I was doing the game, uh, said that I did not have a right to ever sign autographs as the character and that I wasn't the character, and she was expressing her point of view. Uh. And um, I was being called a backstabber. I was being called a scab. Some uh, mm. an artist who I followed on Instagram. Instagram's like the nice place because I have a, a decent sized Twitter following. Um, Instagram was my like quiet place. This woman called me a scab and all sorts and would not hear anything otherwise. Mm. And the crazy piece of this, because this is what mirrors, this is where some of the most beautiful lessons were. I was raised by a woman who was a borderline personality disorder, bipolar with a significant narcissistic piece. She was married and divorced five times. Um, I've had four people, you know, try to kill themselves in front of me, all this stuff, right? And the whole time, what it looked like on the outside is she was this really accomplished, amazing person. And Mm. she would talk bad about me if I did something untoward or if I just didn't think the right thing or breathe the right way. This is the person you were raised by? Yes, this is my mother. Um, And she was the, she wouldn't allow anyone else to bond. So I was, this was my, this is where I chose to come in and, and learn a lot. And, um, so 
what that looks like and how that mirrored this was someone who's not well appearing to have the high ground and I can't say anything. Mm. I could say nothing about and that's why my friend who reached out reached out she's like oh my god this hits all her stuff I better warn her right. you know and I'm so grateful that she did because I had a moment to breathe and and I also grew up as a lone wolf like I had no caretakers um you know I, because of that dynamic you know the whole setup right. I just named yep. so I'm lone wolfy and so my identity especially when I'm like under siege is I go alone and I just right. go, I can take it. And here's somebody coming in to help me. Because that's the truth of my life today. I'm surrounded by love. Right. Surrounded by so much care. So that, you know, and when often when we get triggered in those moments, we revert back to that initial programming. Right. And it's, this was such a beautiful lesson, like, that's not happening. And But what did happen initially is several of my very high-profile peers with lar much larger followings than me picked up the woman's tweet about being treated so unfairly by this game and retweeted it because they watched mm. the first 30 seconds. And my first lesson was assumption. They made a whole ton of assumptions because right. I could see, because I knew the whole story. I'm like $4,000, but what was the $4,000 for guys? How much time in the actual booth? How many lines was that for? It was right. for half a dozen, you know, it was for like six lines. You know, like right. nobody knew that. And I couldn't say anything because I signed, for those who don't know the industry, when we work on a project, we sign an NDA. It's a non-disclosure agreement. You can't right. talk about the game. You can't even acknowledge that you're in it. You can't talk about the storyline, the terms you were hired under, what you got paid. None of it. And so I, is, she, is she breaking her NDA by even saying what she was paid then? She never took the job. Oh. She turned them down, which will come out in a minute. Um so hey, but, she, hold on, I'm sorry, yeah, just confused. Yeah, I thought yeah. I thought she had already done game one and two and you're on three and she But her NDAs for, didn't cover three. Her NDAs covered one and two, not three. But but I know that's what I'm saying is she got paid four thousand dollars for game one and she's talking about what she got paid for game one. No, no, she, I don't know what she got paid for games one and two. She said that she was offered four thousand dollars for game three. And oh, she turned it down. Got it. And yeah, then sorry. And she turned it down. And then you took got and it. And I took okay. the job. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And so so that's why she was angry, um, was because of that, is what she said. Got um it. but I yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Um I just I, it's I just I don't know the space. Yeah. But part of me goes like who like to her, who mm -hmm. who who cares? Like Neg like negotiate that sounds like more of your problem well she did she did try to go back and negotiate and okay the, to be honest a little spoiler alert in the story what she asked for was um well the bloomberg article recounted facts that they found i'm not allowed to speak from my own experience but mm. according to bloomberg who has excellent sources she asked for six figures oh, okay got it yeah and so um yeah so I'll, actually i'll give you guys that background now bloomberg did a story along this timeline in which they found out that she was initially offered $10,000 for the role, which would have been, you know, a few sessions. Union minimum for a four-hour game session is, uh, I think right now, 900 and some dollars, around $1,000, right? Okay. And um, we can get into the whole fairness of that pay scale, et cetera, later. That's a whole separate conversation. Basically, she was offered 10000 She came back and said, that's not enough. And they said, okay, okay, here's another 5000 So here's fifteen grand. Mm. And uh, she still balked and came back and asked for six figures. That's what Bloomberg's reporting has said. That's all but, I'm going to say about that. That wasn't in her. No. Her initial video, video was, I was offered $4,000 to do the entire game. I knew everything I just shared with you, but I couldn't tell anyone. Mm. Everybody was up in arms. My okay. first and, lesson. Sorry. And just to give scale or context to what the scale of this was. Oh, I'll get there in a second. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so that was Sunday. I uh, contacted my agent, contacted Nintendo, and they said, we're just going to let this blow over. Tuesday morning, my agent was tracking this whole thing, and I was on the phone with my agent just losing my mind with frustration because I'm being called all these things that are the opposite of my deepest values. Right. And I cannot open my mouth. She said, you have two corporations you're under NDA to, the game company and Nintendo, and they will come and take, they could come and take everything you have. Mm. And I'm a single mom. Like, I'm the show. Yeah. I'm it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And um, so I was like, no, oh, you know, I can defend myself or I can survive. Like, this is horrifying. And I was right. furious. I mean, that's what obtaining and growing and learning looks like on the other end is me pacing my house and screaming with my agent on the phone going, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, this sucks. This sucks. I'm so angry, right. you know. 
And so that to, by Tuesday morning, there were over 11 million tweets about this. Oh, my God. Over 11 million tweets about this. And they were waiting for this to blow over. And that's when my sister said, you should reach out to Brandon. I mean, this is what he does. I was like, oh, that's such a good idea. But I'm going to back up for a second because the first lesson I learned was assumptions. Mm -hmm. And I get it intellectually. I totally yeah. get it intellectually, right? Like, don't make assumptions. That's terrible. And I watched my friends reboost her, her video going, this is awful. Whew. And thinking, I would have done exactly the same thing. Yeah. I would watch the first 30 seconds and go, oh, my God, I'm so busy. That, yeah, that sucks. And just reboosted without knowing all the facts. So I reached out to my friends one by one, and I did it via voice message because I think tone is so important. Right. And what I said was, hey, <laughs> there's more to this. I promise I did my due diligence before I took the role. Um, there's a lot more to it. It's me going under the bus. And listen, if you still feel like you need to post this, totally fine. No love lost. Just wanted you to have more full information. And yeah. every one of them took it down. And one of them was my oldest, one of my oldest friends, David Hayter. And he actually helped me craft, you know, the framework of what to say first when I reached out. Mm -hmm. um, my second lesson was that moment when I was on the phone with my agent yelling my head off because I was so frustrated. And I would say to her, I'm not yelling at you. I'm not mad at you. I'm just so mad. <laughs> and my whole life, and this goes back to my childhood, the healing of those early, you know, the choices my soul made to bring me into my whole life, I have chosen places where my emotions would be too much. My partner wouldn't like it. They wouldn't. I would just be made wrong or bad for having intense feelings. And I'm an intense person. Right. So in this moment, my agent held space for me. And when I was intense, she was right there with me. Not mad at me at all. She could take it. She right. could take it. And that mm, it gets me every time. That was one of the most moving experiences I've ever had in my life, to be heard and not judged, to be mm. allowed to be where I am and not be judged. And the next morning, I called her immediate senior person, and I called the owner of the agency, who I've, I've been with them for 29 years. And I just told them what gold she had and what she did for me. I couldn't call her for two days because I cry every time I talked about it. It was yeah. so moving and so healing and so beautiful. And I, I was so aware the whole time I was going through this how incredibly privileged I felt. That was alongside all my anger and all my frustration and all this being silenced and how awful that felt was this incredible sense of gratitude that it was me going through this. Mm -hmm. Because I know my commitment in the world and I know I'm gonna, al I'm gonna alchemist this. I'm gonna take this in. I'm going to learn and I'm gonna have it available when appropriate to share with whoever might need it or in whatever space it may be appropriate that others may understand and not cause each other suffering in this way. You that know, right that, there is, yeah. is so important. Ooh. And going through that experience, uh, I, well, there's a couple of gold nuggets I kind of wanted to yeah. tackle or touch on before we move on to the next phase, phase of this. But <clears throat> what was pretty miraculous is to have that gratitude while you're going through it. Yeah, and I think me. a lot of people get caught up into the emotion and the interpretations and the meanings they attach to certain things. But, you know, for me going through a lot of things that I've gone through in my life, I've learned that when I'm going through something unwanted or uncom uncomfortable, it's giving me that edge. It's giving me more mastery. It's giving me growth. And I'm actually feel, I do feel a sense of gratitude when I go through them, even though I don't like it, mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable, but I'm so grateful for it. And it's pretty amazing that you're able to find gratitude for that during this and find these loving moments um, during this, you know, awful, like, unwanted experience is that's yeah. that in itself is, is pretty powerful. And that right there is a, shows a huge amount of personal power gained mm -hmm. during, during all of this. Uh, Thank you. And I think the other thing that you, you that I want to touch on too, is that you said that you felt heard and not judged during yeah. it when you talked to your agent. And this is one of the things that we talk about when it comes to like messaging and just communication in general. Like, mm -hmm. you know, even with your spouse, he's supposed to, supposed to be like your partner in life. And how many times when we talk, we talk at them or we want to get our perspective heard without like creating the space for them to feel heard without being judged. And I think any relationship, friendship, whatever spouse agent and client or whatever, when you can hold the space for them to be who they are and to express their stuff. It's a very, 
ma magical and sacred thing. And this is one of the things that we try to do with our students is to get them to do that with their audience. Like when we talk about problems, emotions, mistakes, actions, that's what you're doing is you're validating and making them feel heard. And it's, it's, it's incredibly, um, incredibly powerful. Yeah. I want to actually touch on that because I just realized something when you were saying it, which is that, mm -hmm. you know, in building our businesses or building our companies or whatever, we're, we're after a goal, right? And we're actually after that feeling that comes yeah. with that goal, that deep joy and peace and safety and expansion. And everybody says, you know, that feeling is available to you now. This is one of the mechanics by which it is available to you now, mm. is that level of surrender and just being present and listening. And like the feeling that you that comes with that has is beautiful. You know, take yeah. something not to, you know, to release your own point of view for a second and deeply listen. But the feeling that comes with it is huge. It's like physically expansive. It's wild. Yeah, I think, uh, and like, surrender is the perfect word because I think a lot of people resist during it. There's just so much resistance. Resistance is I don't want this. When this is going to be over, <laughs> how do I change, blah, blah, blah. And then surrendering is just like, well, it's happening. Yeah. I Let me just deal with it and be grateful for, for this and see where, where it takes me. And yeah. that, I was thinking that, right, there's, yeah. that's personal power. Yeah, I was thinking of the Wizard of Oz, you know, when the witch uh, went through the sky rote with her broom. Surrender, oh, Dorothy. Yeah. Every time I'm in resistance, I'm like, oh. There it is again. You know, surrender, <laughs> Dorothy. You're Too bad. Your head over and over again. Magic is bigger than you, girl. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, well, there was something else that happened. I think I want to talk about this as we go deeper into the yeah. story. Yeah. Um, but let's, what, what happened from, from that? So, moment? okay. So one of the things that happened when I was in Costa Rica, I sat down and, and was like, okay, when I get back, I'm so excited to work on Skills Hub and I'm going to have X hours a day and I'm going to do this and the plan's going to start on Monday and I can't wait. Well, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday were completely devoured by dealing with this. And I started to beat myself up because I'm like, see, you should have. And I went, hold on. I was so lucky to have the awareness of stop. You're dealing with the energy of millions of people coming at you, yeah, learning massive life lessons. There's no more room on your to-do list. So just let's just get present to what you're actually dealing with because there's opportunities here. And if you get your tiny little to-do list out and shove it in the opportunity's face, you're going to miss something. Right. So I was like, okay. I had to just have a lot of self-compassion because one of my old survival tools is self-judgment and criticism. You know, and mm. I've, I've grown myself out of that. And that's now transformed into a little red flag of when I'm off course, right? Right. So I reached out to you and um, I, I messaged Brandon. I was like, um, hey, and 11 million tweets. I'm not sure what to, how to. And he's like, whoa, okay. Um, <laughs> so you should, you know, uh, actually you should chat to the Don. And I was like, oh, no, I don't want to take up space. Because yeah. that's another survival tool is hiding and not and not taking up, so not being a burden, right? Right. And so, because one of my old coping mechanisms was I can take it. I will absorb others' behavior that's off course because I'm I can take it. Right. And what I have found on that path is the body will express back and go, nah, -uh. <laughs> you know, you'll have this illness or that situation or this thing or that problem. So I listened, thankfully. And I reached out and the help I got was tremendous and the support I got was tremendous. And, and it wasn't, it wasn't all what you would say 3d. It was sort of a yeah. feeling in a sense. And it was also other things, but it was also this perspective of, Oh no, you don't. I right. was very surprised to experience that that's a possibility from a spiritually evolved place to put your foot down and yeah. say no, but how you say it was with, is with impeccability. And I that NDA that kept me silent was a blessing. I every single, th yeah, every single thing that I would could have, I would like on Twitter, anything I would repost was immediately just dogpiled onto and interpreted 16 ways to Sunday, none of which I had any influence yeah. or control over or could even respond to. Right. So I was extremely careful about what I hit the like button for. And I had to retract a couple because I'm like, oh, wait, that could be interpreted this way. I am responsible for what... It just It's just so amplified. Your ripple's so amplified. I have, yeah. what, 110, 115,000 followers, and it just got massive, this whole ripple thing going on. So mm -hmm. I, um, I, simply, I only retweeted one thing, which was a, a tweet that a friend of mine, an actor friend of mine, Ben Diskin, wrote about critical thinking, mm -hmm. about how we have to be careful because what we write, we may be... Um, sharing misinformation in our desire to share information. And we really need to have a look at what we share before we share it. And I tweeted, I retweeted that with the little fingers pointing down. And I just said thread in all caps. 
and everybody was like, what is that? What is that? And I was like, oh, Jesus, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> and um, so that was Tuesday, Wednesday. I was being called by Bloomberg, NBC. All these media outlets were calling me for an interview, emailing me for an interview. And I said, I, I can't. I'm under NDA. I hired yeah. an attorney. I found an attorney and hired an attorney to um, find out exactly what my what was what were the facts of this NDA? What are the facts about what I can and can't say? And that was extremely educational. Um, they're vague and can be interpreted all sorts of ways. So better right. be careful. Um, so in the meantime, my um, I drafted a statement. My friend David gave me some wonderful starting points. My agent, Julie Thompson, worked on it with me. And we carved it down to a very simple statement. And we ran that. We emailed it to Nintendo and Platinum to see, you know, is this okay? Does this violate any terms? And they said, no, in fact, thank you. It's a lovely statement. And I was like, thanks. And yeah. um, so I sent it out. And... Um, and that was it. And I think the only other thing I tweeted was perhaps the next day when I um, I just said, there are lessons in this. So many lessons. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's just start with being good to each other. Let's start there and sleep. Sleep is good. You yeah. know, and I just sent that out. And Bloomberg, when the article came out, they wrote an article on it. They did a bunch of excellent research, found out all these facts about the initial offer to the previous actress Um the back and forth that got them up to about 15,000 and the six figure request somewhere in there from her side, like all this. And the whole time I thought she, she has clearly some issues going on in, in her well being. She may not have even been aware of some of this. I don't know. Sometimes people have their representatives or their significant others. You just never know. So I was just going to stay well, out of it and, and wish her well. People have unhealed trauma and different things like that. We all have it. We all have these all automated, have automatic responses and ways to respond to things yeah. and insecurities and all that. And it could have just been something that is in her. She's just like well, angry or this or that and just blend. It was just her automated reaction just to post, right. post it all for some sort of thing going on. Yeah. I mean, more gets revealed know. about that later. I was never mad about her part in it until, until honestly, till she came out and was like, well, yeah, okay, that is what happened. Yeah. And I was like, okay, hold on. <laughs> you threw me under the bus. And wow. But what I got out of it was enormous. For the first few days, a lot of my peers were like, this is crap. This is terrible. And there was n very few people in my corner in right. a visible way. But by the time we were, you know, like Wednesday-ish or so, maybe I didn't look back at the timeline, but it felt like that. Um, my peers were coming out of the woodwork going, mm. I don't know what's happening, but that's not who this, that's not who Jennifer is. Right. That is not who she is. I was getting so much love and support. It was mind blowing. And I was so humbled because my previous couple of days had been even my, my really solid core following on Twitter. Some of them were starting to go, wow, she's not who I thought she was. Oh my God. And right. those were the ones that were like, oh Lord, I wish I could say something. I can't say anything. You know, well, that was really hard. I yeah. want to point out a couple of things. Um, like you said, the NDA was like one of the biggest blessings. I didn't feel like it at the time. Cause I, I remember there's two things that I, I told you specific specifically. I, and one of them was kind of like, honestly, I wouldn't address any of it, especially if it's not true. Um, I said something along those lines and I yep. said, and I said something like it, it'll blow over. Like people will always yeah. forget. And you see it all the time. You see like celebrities and people just like make a big deal about something and then people forget about it and then life goes on and then everything's back to normal. And it's like, as if give it six months it's as if it never even happened. And I was like, yeah. just, just let it simmer. And I think where a lot of people get stuck or they get into even more trouble is when they start to defend themselves yes. and defense. When you start to defend yourself, you give them more fuel to go after you give them more things to talk about. Yeah. But also it's coming from a place of, of personal power. And, and yeah. like if for me, my, the, my outlook on it is when something like that's happening, there's three responses. It's either just be quiet and let it happen and mm. surrender to it and just let people do their thing. And then when it kind of simmers down, come up for air and just move on with your life. Yeah. Uh, number two two is you apologize, but that's only if you actually did something yeah. that you are like, you want to apologize for, and which is not your case. And then the third is, it's, is defense. It's explaining yourself, but that is an example of losing personal power because mm -hmm. it's you, the external world is, is in this tornado and you're like, no, no, no. Let me give my energy to this tornado. Yeah. It's just going to suck that 
energy back. And so yeah. our natural response is to want to defend ourselves. But that's also a loss of personal power. And luckily for you, you had your NDAs to kind of just keep you, yeah. keep you at bay and, and let it simmer. And, and then, forced, um, yeah, with, with the, with the Don, um, and I don't think people actually realize how powerful he actually is. Um, yeah. but he can be, well, you said, you said something, you said it was, it was great to see something along the lines of, it was great to see someone so spiritual or to use spiritual, but also with like power or strength. And I think yeah. a lot of the times we think that spirituality means that you're just like love and light. And da, 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 da. it's like, no, mm-hmm. spirituality is, is balance. It's the dark. It's, it's balancing your dark, healing the dark, understanding there is dark and there is light, yeah. but it's also power. It's, it's knowing your boundaries and maintaining your boundaries. Yeah. And that's what the Don's really, really good at is when, cause this isn't the first, like I would say it's the first person I know that works with the Don who had it at th- this scale, but there's definitely been people who've been tried to be canceled and things like that in the past yeah. Yeah. where the Don will step in. And he'll just put like a black mirror around you. And so anything coming at you gets reflected right back to those people. Yeah. And, Boy. and it's, and it's amazing <laughs> how fast things can change and, yeah. and shift like that. But it really what it is, is it's a maintaining of boundaries. And I think a lot of people don't know what their boundaries are or maintain yeah. them, but maintaining a personal boundary takes yeah. personal power and is a huge personal, uh, uh, or huge spirituality, um, I don't, I don't know if it's tool or category or whatever you want to call it element. I would, I guess is, yeah. is the right word. Yeah. And you got to experience all of that. And it's such a, such a, a, a blessing. Yeah. And it was, it was great having, I kind of was, I, I see this as an incredibly lucky experience. I got to ha- watch things be modeled for me and go, Oh, okay. I can be spiritual and spicy. Um, yeah. you know, I can, I can, I can, I'm forced to hold my tongue. I'm forced to have a super giant pause before I respond with lots of constraints around it and lots of other, you know, trustworthy, wonderful people checking my work, (laughs) you know, um, going, are you sure you want to respond to that tweet? Oh, geez, I didn't see that part of it. Uh, Yeah. Nope. Nope. Taking that down. You know, um, so I'm incredibly lucky. I got to experience with the support of others what it's like to have what I feel was an impeccable response. And I'm proud of it. And I also am very aware I didn't do that alone. I had tons of support crafting that thing, right. you know, tons of support, tons of constraint. Like this was incredibly lucky. The things I'm, I've learned and I, I hesitate to say I've learned cause I'm still, still processing them, you know, but I've right. seen two other moments that came up where ordinarily I would have gone, Oh, it's fine. I'll just do whatever. Where right. I stood up and went, you know what? That doesn't work for me. And, uh, let's do this and not even, and this is why, like, I right. don't need to explain. Just you don't like, need to explain. No. no can we do this instead? I'd prefer this. You know, just the whoosh, the permission, the large scale permission to do that is incredible. And I want to, I want to touch on something too, because I think a lot of people get to that place where they finally discover their power and how powerful they actually are. So they start to stand up for themselves or start to say certain things or they go too aggressive. And it's like, (laughs) and and that's fine if you want to do that. But I think when you use, when you, the way you just, describe it as impeccable it's it's understanding the power but combining it with empathy and kindness yeah and that's what the don always teaches us is like he's like kindness is everything he said you got to do every everything be impeccable with everything operate on kindness and i think a lot of people go in and they hold that level of just like power or boundaries but there's a lot of like anger or greed or whatever attached to it. Like you go into a business deal and you're like, nope, this is what I'm worth. This is what I'm getting. And it's, it comes from a place of pure greed. Whereas yeah. kindness, it could be like, I totally understand your guys' offer. I appreciate where you're coming from. But for me, this is where I need to be at. And it's just a much more respectful conversation while yeah. maintaining the boundary. And it sounds like that's yeah. what you got to experience and found is that mm-hmm. you got to find your power, your boundaries, and a huge amount of of kindness, regardless of how everyone else is acting or being towards you. I've, yeah. And that's, I'm so grateful for that. That's always been like a, I was, I'm very lucky. Like I was born, I think because of everything I went through, cause my mom was sort of the opposite in the way she, she operated. It really had me value kindness. I'm so grateful for that teaching from her. Um, but I remember, I oh got, I was tiny and she was, you know, <laughs> she just beat the crap out of me about something. And just like, I didn't want to hurt her. 
I didn't want to strike back because I wouldn't hurt her. So I've always had that built in. I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. Um, so kindness is always there. F- for me, this was such a great um, lesson in being kind and strong. Because mm-hmm. if we go back to the beginning of our conversation to sort of being feeling unworthy and insecure and putting a lot of pressure on myself because all my personal power was leaking and I was focusing right. on everybody else. Talking about kindness, that's focusing on everybody else too. Like that business negotiation example you just used, it occurred to me that I'm worth this and I'm worth that is all about the self. Mm-hmm. And so is I'm not worthy. Oh my God, I feel so much pressure. That's all about the self. Yeah. And when the power, ironically, the internal power takes over, the vision moves. Our vision can move out to seeing the big picture. What are all these different pieces? What is the greatest good of all concerned here? And how do we take the next step toward that? Yeah, I love that. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so let's just kind of like wrap up the story with oh, God. what ended well, there, up there's more. <laughs> happening. Uh, yeah, so, I know, I, so I think where we left off, which is, uh, you said Bloomberg came out with a bunch. Yeah, Bloomberg picked up the story. Facts, yeah, and, and then all these outlets picked it up. Like a bunch of big outlets picked up the story, and then one line, and everybody's doubting Bloomberg. Like, well, that's just they're just lying because of this. You know, some of the diehards were like, they're lying, and this is so crap. Jennifer still sucks. And I was like, okay, but my friends are coming out, so it felt nice not to be alone in that way on in the right. social media world. And my son, God, you know, you're parenting okay when your son says something to you. You know, well, by the third day, Shane's like. Because I'm not a person who walks around with my phone. He's like, Mom, put your phone down. Mm. And I was like, I know, I know. I'm managing all, a lot of energy here. And I'm just, I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of here. This is where I am right now. But I'm, I'm definitely working my way out. And he looks at me. He goes, Mom, social media is not your life. Mm. And I was like, well, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> and I put well, my phone I, down. I was like, okay. Can I, can I touch on that? Because yeah. that was another thing I had written down as you were talking is that I think a lot of, a lot of times we get so consumed in like, Oh my God, I'm getting called out online and this and that are the haters. And what I've done just in all the ad spend we run, we, we get haters mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. What I've learned is that when you just turn the phone off and for me, walk into nature, I go walking into yes. nature. I'm like, you know what? Oh. That thing doesn't exist right now. That's mm-hmm. what so powerful about being present. Like I'm sitting yeah. in this room having a conversation with you. And if I'm, have a million tweets going on calling me out that doesn't exist in this moment moment when my intention and presence is on you and our conversation yeah the same thing when you were sick the whole thing was going down you had no idea you were not suffering from it emotionally Mm -hmm. it was not in your existence it was not in your reality Mm -hmm. because your attention wasn't on it Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of times we get so consumed by that stuff but it's like look if you just simply move your attention away yeah it doesn't exist anymore like your attention's not on it, your energy's not not in it. And then when we get consumed in it, it starts stealing our energy, stealing mm-hmm. our attention. And um, that's one of the my like people always ask me, how do you deal with the, the haters? I'm like, I just yeah. ignore it and then go walk in nature and leave my phone behind. And like, yeah. all that stuff doesn't exist. What was that crazy thing way back when? And I, I have a in university. I learned to you know, took a, had a couple different majors. I ended up with a business degree, but I stopped along in an advertising class somewhere along the way. And mm-hmm. the guy was like, doesn't matter what they say, just get the name right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, that's bold, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, you know, listening to you talk about nature and all that, it occurs to me there's very little that's objectively real. The yeah. sun is shining. The sun is there. The planet is here. Our heart is beating. Like... I don't know. When you think about quantum physics and the nature of reality, like, I don't know. Like, our minds fool us, don't they? Yeah. Thinking these things. even But I will say this felt incredibly real as I was going through it. I can say this now from this place, you know, two month and a half later. Like, it's not real. Well, I think yeah. The, I think Tell that to you on the couch. Is, <laughs> I think the thing is, is where, you, where there are a million, 11, or, or 11 million tweets going out, yeah. calling you out. Yeah. That like that that was happening. It was. Mm-hmm. That was a part of our three D physical world. That was really real. Yeah. yeah. The difference is is what are you letting into your mind, your thoughts, your frequency, your yeah. your body. You don't have to let it in. And I think yeah. a lot of people think we have have to address this. We have. I'm like, no, you don't. Well, you, you can operate around it or with it powerfully if you want to. Yeah, and I think I think we're not all on 
at the same spot in the playing field when it comes to that either, because we all are born with different levels of empathicness and porousness. Right. You know, I'm an empath, um, which was overwhelming for a long time. Like I could, I would instantly feel what other people were feeling in an overwhelming way. And I was like, what is wrong with me? I thought I was insane until I realized, right. oh, I'm just mapping onto people. <laughs> I need better yeah. boundaries, you yeah. know, or I need energetic boundaries. I need, I need an envelope right. around me. I need a bubble. And, um, and then, you know, we have different levels of hypervigilance depending on how we were raised. You know, we have urges to control what's happening. We have all these little things that are our companions as we go through this. So I think we also have to have love and compassion for ourselves, too, when we find ourselves going at the effect of some of this and go, OK, 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 hold on. You know, I can't compare myself to Brandon and his stillness and his objectivity um, right now because I'm here with my history and my being but I can use right. his objectivity and stillness as an inspiration point and as I can mm -hmm. model that behavior and go okay okay I'm gonna act as if I'm gonna put on the Brandon hat for a minute and go okay I'm gonna go through this this way you know or my perception of the Brandon hat because I don't know right. everything in the Brandon hat right right so yeah yeah I, it's yeah a lot of amazing lessons and I think the other thing too is having gone through something so extreme and so big mm. Go, I think there's like nothing can stop you now. Like every little thing. <laughs> Don't like, say that. Oh, I'm not, I need a lesson break. break. <laughs> you get 50,000 tweets calling me out on something. You're like, yeah, whatever. I had 11 I, million one time. Yeah, pretty this much. Is, a, this is a breeze. It's a walk in the park. It's so funny. I was on Instagram and I, I reposted uh, an interview with Gabor Mate about um, the potential relationship between growing up in trauma and ADD and, mm -hmm. and, I posted it because it rang true for me, and I had people crawl up my backside. They were oh, so yeah, mad at me. And I was yeah. like, oh, what is this? I wasn't like, oh. I was like, oh, what is this? I was like, oh, okay. And so I let it hang for a couple hours, and I replied directly to each person, because not because I needed to defend myself, but because right. I wanted them to know that I hear them mm. and that I am not devaluing their experience, and I am not dismissing them because they felt dismissed and devalued. And I was like, no, no. Not at all. And I thank them each for their perspective. And I, I said, I'm going to take this down in a couple hours, but I just want to leave it up to you so you know that I see you and that, I, yeah. that you are not devalued, that you matter and your perspective matters. And then I took it down. But that's it was such a kind, different experience kindness, going through it. That's the kindness thing. Yeah, I guess But so. it's, that's the thing is like you have to be, be able, and the people that are always at the top, they don't bend or move based from what they believe or their purpose or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you don't like it, too, too bad. Yeah. And, and, but you can respond with the kindness like, yeah. like you did and show them to be that they're heard and, and validate yeah. their experience and, yeah. and things like that. Well, um, just want to throw in there. Sure. My career has always been, uh, be, I'll tell you briefly about an experience with a friend of mine, uh, back in the early nineties. When I first booked Carmen San Diego, I went to, I was traveling up to Labrador to see my family, and I stopped in to see him along the way. He was in university at McGill at the time studying theology. A very spiritual person. I mean, the Dalai Lama picked him out of a crowd when he was like you know, 19 or 17 or something, and he still does social media stuff for the Dalai Lama. And wow. Incredible professor, just lovely human being. But when we were there, this is 30 years ago, I was bemoaning my career. I was like, oh, it's so superficial. It's not going to do anything to help the world. It's so lame. And he was like, hold on, hold on. He goes, there's this concept called divine spark. When you are connected to the high, that high, special part of yourself and you go in to record anything, anything, mm -hmm. that spark, imagine it like a little spark and it lays down on the track. It is living on that track. And then it goes out. Now, mind you, this was the early 90s when we listened to the radio in our cars. Um, and it goes out and somebody might, might be a commercial for dog food. Who cares? Um, somebody's listening in their car. Or not really listening. The radio's on in their car. It's in the background. They're annoyed with the traffic, whatever. That spark comes out of the radio on that track and it alights on them. And they, for just a second, are connected to the highest and best part of themselves, almost invisibly, maybe imperceptibly, but it happened. My mm. entire career has been a delivery system for Divine Spark. That is mm. my purpose my entire career. So, I love that. Through yeah. all the work that you've done. Every, it doesn't matter. It's just always there in my heart. That and my, I realized after a few years, I was like, I'm going to break through this. I'm going to break through that. I just like kicking down barriers. So that's yeah. what I do. That's what Skills Hub is. We're kicking down barriers my whole career. Let me, I broke the gender, uh, not me. That's so very self-important. I was part of a game that broke gender barriers in games. You know, I yeah. was I was was privileged to play one of the first transgender characters in a major game. I would never do it now because now we have. Thankfully, the business has evolved to where we have actual 
we can cast authentically transgender humans to play those roles. Right. Back then, that wasn't happening, and I was so right. grateful that. Uh, so I like breaking down barriers and throwing around sparks yeah. to disrupt things. Well, I love the <laughs> I love that whole, that whole thing, and with about the spark and and all that stuff, because I think a lot of people do get caught up in like, oh, this isn't meaningful, or there's no, yeah. I need a bigger impact. But yeah, you know, you may not be ready for that purpose of the impact quite yet that a lot of these experiences are still a spark from your soul in this moment in time yeah. that is required in order for you to get to the next level. And, and for me, I look back at like when I would teach YouTube or like local marketing and I got to a point where like, I don't want to teach YouTube anymore or Facebook <laughs> ads. But yeah. when I did, that was a spark of my soul from that moment in time of what I was supposed to be doing in that yeah. moment, which prepared yeah. me for what we're doing now. And even now I'm like, I know there's something next after what I'm currently doing yeah. and I'm having to yeah. do what I do now in order to get to the, that yeah. next thing as, as well. And I, th I don't think a lot of people understand that, you know, it's, it's just being in the moment, appreciating where you're at yeah. and, and knowing it will leave lead to something at, at some point and just yeah. not, you know, don't downgrade it or diminish it. Yeah, we we put so much emphasis on the big and splashy and I don't know, I've never heard a story of anyone on their deathbed going, gosh, I wish I'd done, I wish I had more of the big and splashy. Yeah. They're all saying, I wish I'd hugged more, I wish I'd loved more. The other day I was working and it's important and I was digging in on some Skills Hub stuff and, and I was having this feeling inside that wasn't good. And I went, you know what? It's, uh, it was like 2.45. I was like, no, no, no. This is the time to stop any any aspiration, any achievement, and go make cookies for my kid and his half dozen mm. friends. This is it. That. This is what matters. I will not miss this moment. I will not. Because this, right. it's the, you know, I'm getting this award Saturday and I'm thinking about uh, like, oh gosh, I, I guess I have, you know, it's, it's a speech thing, right? I got to do a speech and I have been un... I, the speech has not come to me yet until this morning. And I realized that what stands out for me is we're going to be in this incredible evening of so much beauty that people worked so hard to create, which is wonderful. And I'm deeply grateful. And what also isn't spoken to is that there, that's the tiniest sliver of time for all of us. What we really spend our time in is the breakfasts and the lunches and the dinners and the moments and the still and the being here with this person and being here with that person and being alone for a minute and walking in the plants like it all is valuable like I can't even oh I can't even there's not a word big enough it, it's so it's uh, it's so important it's it's everything yeah you know it is well I look back on my my journey of building this business and the first four years of Will yeah. um he, when he was a bit when he was a kid yeah. I mean, I don't remember a lot of those years and he's only eight. So those was like four years ago, but those were four years where I'm like really working and hard and, yeah. and, and even my relationship with my wife suffered during that time. Yeah. Um, and so now over the last two years, it's been a lot more of what you're talking about. Yeah. And it's been a lot more being present, being here with the family. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I have a lot of things to do, but I'm going to go take my kids out on a hike because I don't want to miss like those other four years. And like, I have haters online right now. Cool. I don't really care about that because I'm, <laughs> I'm with my kid right now. Yeah. And, and like, that's so insignificant. Like someone yes. told me to go kill myself in a YouTube video or to do this or that I'm stupid or whatever, or that I'm a scammer. But I'm like, I don't, it means absolutely nothing because I'm living my life. I have the business that I love. I like, we're making mm -hmm. great money. I'm doing something that I love and I'm spending yeah. time with my family. I'm like, I don't like, excuse my French, but I'm like, I just don't give a fuck. I, I don't care. Like say whatever you want. I literally right. don't give a fuck. You can, right. you know? And, and so well, I think there's, there's a lot of magic in that. There is. And I don't know about you, but when I read those comments, it was harder in the Bayonetta thing because I was being accused of something I didn't do. But yeah, even now, tough. I'll see them about stuff. And for me, most quite often, I just feel deep levels of compassion because they're telling me who they are. Yeah, They're telling me all about themselves in those comments. And yeah. I go, oh, my gosh, that's got to be hard. That's got to be hard to be like that. 
That's right. got to be hard where the only way you feel important is if you say in crappy stuff so you try to stand out because you hurt so much and you feel so insignificant, you got to get your razor super sharp. I'm like, yeah. oh, man, that's got to that's gotta suck to live like that. I'm so sorry well, you're going that, through that. And then also yeah. worrying and stressing and figuring out how to respond to that yeah, is so don't. energy draining. And I'm yeah. like, look, I would rather conserve my energy and yeah. give it to the people that that I love, like my kids yeah. or my family or my students who actually yeah. believe in what we're doing. And so yeah. when I respond to a hater, I'm like, cool, I have a hundred units of energy I can give today. Why would I give three to some person who's never going to work with us, never going to make a difference, you know, based off of what we do. Why not give that to a student who needs a review on something, a student who's really struggling with something, yeah. because that yeah. will make more of a difference. And that's yeah. where I just choose to spend my energy and, and give my energy. Yeah. I, I don't know if this is cause I, you know, I'm, I've been, I, I've spent a lot of my social media time on Twitter up till a couple months ago. Um, I am so hyper aware that when I respond to something, I'm actually feeding that plant. Yeah. You know, what you focus on grows. It's actually, it's still my pinned tweet after, I don't know how long. Like I'm, when somebody's really vicious and vile, I don't block them because that's attention. Mm -hmm. I simply mute them because mm -hmm. I don't want to feed any attention into that. And I'm just so aware I'm handing out packets of energy when I pay attention right. to anything. Now, this was harder. Bayonetta was harder because it, it was very specific. And I actually, I, I learned that managing that volume of energy coming at you is a full-time thing. Like, it's going to yeah. take a block of time. So respect yourself and give yourself a block of time to process and deal with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, I appreciate you coming on and, and sharing that experience with us. Yeah. Oh, I have to button up the week. So the whole week happened. The Bloomberg article came out. Oh, yeah. Uh, the woman later came out and said that basically what Bloomberg article said was true. Oh, and yeah. at the very end, yeah, at the end of this really difficult week, I get a call from the Society of Voice Acting uh, Arts and Sciences, which they, uh, I guess they're considered to be like the Academy Awards of Voice Acting, that they're, they want to give me the Industry Icon Award. <laughs> which is the oh award gosh. I'm going to get this weekend. I was like, oh my God, I have whiplash from this week. This has I been know. the craziest. I was like, what a button to the week. That is insane. So now I'm just texting pictures of Mandy and the Don, like my dress. Like, this is the dress yeah. I'm going to wear. This is what I'm going to do. <laughs> I, I totally forgot to even mention that, but I, rem oh, yeah. I remember getting that text from you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it was almost like a couple days later. It was like one text was like, oh my gosh, I'm dealing with blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah blah. Then it was like a couple days or maybe a week later, and you were like, "Hey, so this is weird, but uh, it's a <laughs> crazy turn, turn of events." Where I'm getting the so and so yeah. award, and it's just, yeah. I mean, it's just so amazing because you just never know what's going to happen ever. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's I, more I argument love, for personal power because the world yeah. will go whiplash on you. And you just kind of yeah. hold your center. A hundred percent. Well, I appreciate you coming on and sharing uh, that story with us, sharing your lessons with us. Thank you. Um, I know it'll help a lot of people because I think that's one of the biggest fears and worries that a lot of our students and listeners have is, is the fear of judgment, the fear of haters, yeah. the fear of getting canceled and, and all of that stuff. And yeah. um, I can't imagine anyone experiencing more than, you know, a, a, a uh, quote, quote unquote, a call out in the realm of millions and millions of people. And you did it or went through it, experienced yeah. it, you survived and you're thriving. And so... <laughs> So I, I really do appreciate from the bottom of my heart you coming on and sharing that experience with us. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the space to share and thank you for the space that you create and hold. I, I, I have such deep appreciation for you and for your team. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, of, of course. Um, if people want to follow you, learn more about you. Yeah. You um, let's see. You can always find me at acting.skillshub.life because that's mm -hmm. the space that I created with my sister and our partner, Bill. And uh, I am at jhalegram on Instagram. I am at J Hale tweets on Twitter and those are kind of the only places I ever really show up. I think I'm official Jennifer Hale on Facebook, but I just auto feed Instagram to Facebook. So, gotcha. Yeah. Thank okay, you. cool. All right, guys, we'll go check her out and um, let us know how you enjoyed this episode. Send us both DMS letting us know or share this episode on Instagram. And if you have not yet done so, please leave us a review on iTunes and I'll see you all next week uh, for another episode. Take care, everyone.
Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, go below, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you click on that bell icon and get notified every time we drop a new episode. Now, if you're looking for the show notes, we have them linked underneath this video, as well as our social media handles and some links to free training and offers that we drop from time to time to help you guys even further. So go check those out if you're interested, and thank you so much for tuning in to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast.